I want to welcome those of you that are joining us that were watching the Michigan State contest. Welcome to the temporary home of New Mexico. We're in Lubbock, Lubbock Christian University. And New Mexico has their hands full right now with Utah State. You see the score right. It is a 12-2 start for Utah State. Well, Utah State is so balanced on both ends of the floor. They're not letting New Mexico get anything down inside the paint. And just like they played two days ago, Utah State only allowed the Lobos to score 12 points down inside throughout the entire game. So far tonight for the Lobos, zero. Keda. Boy, what a pretty flush that is. Up with it. They go ahead and give him that shot, and he made it look easy. This is how you start a game. My goodness. We'll say goodbye to our FS2 audience. You can capture us again on Fox Sports 1. Utah State. Well, you're looking like a March team now, aren't you? For those of you that are concerned about that, but those numbers not worth looking at. Just a slow start. It happens to every team. But I think when you had a dramatic loss in game one of the series, this is not, this is not, Richie, the way you wanted to start. Not at all. One for nine from the field for the Lobos. Six of six for Utah State. They are dominating just like they did two nights ago on both ends of the floor here in Lubbock. Active long distance up top. That one knocked away by Wooster. Did he get a hand on it? And that one just comes up so. short. It, but here's what you're seeing. Utah State's doing exactly what they want to do. They're making New Mexico take shots outside the paint. And when they do shoot in the paint, it's been getting blocks. Two blocks now for Mimi Keita down inside. They want to make New Mexico take all their shots from the outside, use their length to deter those shots in the interior, and take contested threes so they can rebound and go the other way. Saw something that wasn't there upon penetration. Justin Bean looked to kick it right back out. But he shot an empty hole. Bean's an outstanding player. It's a rare miscue. This is an athlete at 6'7", out of Southmore High School in Moore, Oklahoma, averaging 12, 8 rebounds. He's a great shooter, too, shooting almost 60% this year. And get this, he came to Utah State. He redshirted his true freshman year. He was just a walk-on. He has worked himself into being one of the best players in the West. You love stories like that. Look at the immediate crash defensively. I mean, they are double teaming in the paint every single time, daring the Lobos, as you said, Richie, to shoot from distance. We'll give you distance. We're not giving you anything in the paint. They did a great job two nights ago here in this court. We mentioned it earlier, only 12 points in the paint for New Mexico. You're seeing that same trend right now. For New Mexico to have a chance, they have to do a better job of finding ways to score in the paint. And those points in the paint could be rebounds and go the other direction. They could be second chance opportunities. They could be just getting into the paint and scoring. But you have the long arm Nimi Keita, as well as two other seven footers on this Utah State team to contend with throughout the course of the game. Taking a peek at the shot clock to make sure they have it accurate. Randy McCall, John Higgins, Kevin Brill are officials tonight. Well, these officials, you know, they travel pretty quietly. They come out here and stay below the radar, but they have to stay fit. They have to deal with the same challenges that these athletes do. Testing's a part of what they go through. One night they're in Tucson, the next night they're here with us. Right. It's, it's been a unique year, just like the athletes for the officials. They've been doing a great job this season. I think they travel more than most teams. No doubt about that. Shot clock at 20. 15 24 till the team's head into the locker room. Just a dominating performance thus far. Miller does a nice job pushing it out. There's that help from Kato on a double team. They're continuing to double team from the baseline side. And a turnover. That kind of feels empty when after the whistle blows, you drop one in there, but that's exactly what occurred. As Jeremiah Francis, after the whistle, the Ohio native drained a triple. And he has really struggled from behind the arc. He's made a couple threes in the last couple of games, but Jeremiah Francis is a guy that New Mexico has to get making some shots. He wasted a three-pointer there, huh? And you never know, maybe just, just having the feeling of that is uh, something confident. I'll, I'll leave that up to you to analyze. <laughs> Every player's different. Kate is so nimble, dumps it back out. He leads the team in assists. Did I say that yet? You can say it as much as you want because it's impressive. A seven-footer leading his team in assists per game, almost three and a half a game. Wow. What does that mean, Richie? I mean, when you look at those numbers, what does that mean to you? Well, it means, number one, he's got good touch on his pass. But number two, he's so used to getting double and triple team now. 
He's being patient, taking his time, looking over the defenders and hitting the shooters. Bangs off the glass and missed that time. An opportunity for Javante Johnson all the way with the penetration and the roll for Marco Anthony. You can give Anthony now seven, make it nine points. Look at the way Utah State's in a stance. They're getting in the passing lanes. They're double teaming inside the paint. Up double with it quickly. Double was just a little bit late right there, but you certainly have to credit Manuel for getting that shot off, especially over Kata. Native of Angola. Valdir Manuel with the bucket. Harkham College transfer in Pennsylvania, where he was good. An All-American at the junior college level. But they're holding auditions. New Mexico is right now for anybody who'd like to step up. That's the player who could. Anthony goes in hard, too hard, offensive foul. Well, I like this move right here by Anthony. He just took it strong. So simple. So simple. Too many guys want to try to draw a foul. They're going to hesitate. Anthony just goes straight up. He's left-handed, so he goes straight up with that left hand and finishes strong. Takes the contact and finishes. That's when, you know, in practice, they got those pads out trying to make you finish with contact in the warm-ups. A 13-2 run to crack this game open early on in the first 430. He earned it. He earned the look as the defense flew right on by, but then he missed it. Rod Brown came up empty. Honestly, I think that's a lot of intimidation. You know, you're not going to get the block shots, but as a shot blocker in Kata, you're going to alter a lot of shots. A whistle. They are penetrating, flying through the lane. That's Sean Bearstow. He grabs at his lower back some contact. Saquon Singleton, his first personal foul. Third team foul. Now this New Mexico squad has been going through a bit of an identity change. Fourth year for Coach Weir. He's got 12 transfers, or 12 newcomers, six of which are transfers, only two seniors on the team. And then playing a little bit of a mix of trying to press all game, play fast up and down the floor offensively and defensively, or just playing smash mouth, where you kind of slow it down, but you get it down inside the paint. And it's a, it's, it's, you're trying to figure it out. They got to practice very, very late because of their situation in New Mexico. That's why they're here in Lubbock. I think they're a little bit behind in trying to figure out who they are. An offensive rebound and a whistle. Manuel, right place, right time there. Prior to that, the shot was missed by Rod Brown. Watch this. Watch Nimi Keita. He doesn't get the block shot. But look how high the offensive player has to shoot it to get it over his long, outstretched arms. So it's again, you're not blocking every shot if you're Keita, but you're altering shots. And that is almost more valuable than getting the block itself. Absolutely. And what a weapon that Utah State has in Keita. Certainly a monster defensively is the first free throw is a miss. Manuel, six points a game. Just his sixth and seventh free throw attempts. He came in three of five, nine points total in the couple of games against Nevada, both losses, as he drops in to make it a 13-point deficit. You see New Mexico here. They're going to pick up full court. Now, here's the problem with that. If Utah State beats this press, they get an easy layup or an outside shot. Could be more points in the paint for them. At the same time, they're banking on possibly getting deflections or steals and getting easy points themselves. I think they have to force turnovers to beat Utah State. Keita got pretty busy with the feet, too much so, and a traveling violation. Some new faces on, by the way, for Utah State. Stephen Ashworth is out there, the freshman, and he's a native of Utah. Alfonso Anderson, the great student out of Garfield High and a good player, too, out of Seattle. Number 10 right there, Anderson working defensively. And a traveling violation. Back-to-back -back turnovers. Well, again, New Mexico, they're going to press right up. They go this man-to-man -man full court press. Sometimes they go into a diamond press, which is a zone, a 1-2-1-1. One, one, one. Both of which, the man or the 1-2-1-1, one, 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 they'll oftentimes trap out of it. Not all the time. They're going to keep you on edge. They're not going to let you know when they're trapping, but they might trap the inbound. They might trap it at the sideline once it crosses half court. Utah State right there with Boise State in this conference as it pertains to net rating. That's basically just your overall explosiveness as a team. 
and how you score per 100 possessions. The top two teams in those advanced metrics in this conference are Boise State number one, Utah State number two. It's incredible. I mean, some terrific basketball teams nationally out of the Mountain West. I mean, look what San Diego State did last year. What an incredible run. So disappointing that COVID canceled what could have been a Final Four team. Without a 30-win season. I was fortunate enough this year to be on the mic when they went to Tempe, Arizona and hammered ASU. <laughs> They're incredible. I mean, just crushed them. They're an excellent team right now in the pack. San Diego State would be one of the top teams in the pack the way they play, and another miss of a layup. New Mexico is missing too many chippies. You have to make those, especially against a team like this. Some playing time for another big fella, Trevin Dorius, the fellow seven-footer, the backup for Kata. Averages about three a game with four rebounds. Right away, instant impact. That's got to feel good. Nice little jump hook. Will be the heir apparent to earn more playing time next season. And he was just right place, right time. Knocking that one free was Dorius. A poor pass. And another turnover. Not a clinic thus far as it pertains to taking care of the basketball. <laughs> that one is banged home. McGee. And that may be just what the doctor ordered. Keith McGee. He's out of New York in a 68th career game he is playing. And he is the most active three-point shooter for New Mexico. 10 of 27 coming in. Barristow says, I'm right there with you, but he's short. The Australian, whose brother, by the way, had a little run with the Bulls in the NBA. Fires that one with yet another turnover. That's seven turnovers to two. A 20 to eight start. They're just fortunate to get to the eight. Does this get the confidence going? Oh, Lobos, they hope so. This New Mexico team, glad to have you back with us. Richie and Darren, and Richie, this has really been a challenging year for this, this New Mexico team, and for Paul Weir, who quite frankly was trying to kind of put down some stakes and have year three and four be the big years. Right, and I, you know, I feel bad for them, honestly. It's an awful situation, New Mexico, they don't allow more than five people to practice, and it can be no contact. So when they actually could all get together, the first in level in Texas, now they're in Lubbock, you know, they have to play all of a sudden with each other and figure each other out, play live contact, rebounding stuff, team-related stuff. They got going, say, about mid-November, when most of these teams were getting going in June and July. It has been a very difficult transition for this Lobo squad, and quite frankly, they're very much behind all these other teams that they're playing. Besto all the way, it was right there in front of him, and he missed. Off to his left, he went. And the freshman, the Australian native, the exercise science major, comes up empty. Boy, a gutsy pass, and just too gutsy. Right into the hands defensively of the seven-footer, Trevin Dorius. Dorius asked for the basketball right there with the block. Boy, Malawatch was in his face. He just did a textbook perfect, straight up in the air, parallel, perfect defense. And you love to reward your team overall if you can come up with a pair. I mean, look at Malawatch, number 10. Help side defense, goes straight up, takes it in the chest, didn't try to block it really, just went straight up with his hands and legs and arms and straight up in the air and gets a block shot as a result. Malawatch, a very strong defender as well. The heartbeat of this program. Always Australian junior national team. Sorry, Richie. No, it's great. It, you know, Australia, originally from Sudan, yes. went to Australia. And it's just an amazing story that young man has. You can't not root for him. I just love saying his name. Say it again. McQuatch Malawatch. <laughs> One of my favorites. One of my favorites, McQuatch Malawatch. How can you not love it? Plus, he can ball. He was not, not able to do anything with that. Hello, Justin Bean. Hammer. What some good ball movement will do for you. Roll the defense to sleep. And a turnover sends it back the other way at the nine minute mark. A 22 to eight start. And a reach there. Emmanuel Quach, Mr. Bean, I assume. It's the way they move the basketball. This is a great pass and great finish, but nobody really talks about Stephen Ashworth. He's the young man, the freshman, who passed the ball down inside the paint. 
because of his dribble towards the paint, he brought the defense with him, and that's why Justin Bean's wide open by the basket. Ashworth, fellow Australian with by far the best shoes on the floor. <laughs> he looks like you're, you're a SoCal Beach guy right there in that neck of the woods. <laughs> Ashworth with the with turquoise there. I love him. I mean, I you know, love he, him. He just got engaged on Christmas Eve. That could have been a gift from the wife. Or future wife, I should say. The fiance. The fiance. He was great. He came out. Ashworth greeted the officials as they made their way out. Very political of him. Very wise, but it was genuine. He knew he'd have his time handling the offense. Alpine, Utah, Lone Peak High School. He is one of five, Mr. Ashworth. Denise, his mom. Danny, his dad. And he's got the ball right now, sharing with Mr. B. 22-8 start. The big fella's back in. Wooster all the way to the bucket. He just sliced through several oh, towers. What a winner. What a winner. And to go there in traffic as a right-hander and finish with your left, it's impressive stuff. So he did everything well in high school. I mean everything. He was a great quarterback. He was a great safety. He was an amazing basketball player. A couple of times the Montana Gatorade Player of the Year. That was a football player play right there. 3,400 yards he threw for as a quarterback. Rushed for over 2,000. Not bad. Wooster. Give it to him in the backfield. First down. Basketball as well. So tons of fun this weekend, and we trust that you're enjoying it safely wherever you may be. This, of course, a road game for Mr. Ashworth and his mates. But, but not in New Mexico, not at the pit, not in Albuquerque, as we shared with you here at Lubbock Christian. A pretty little Division II arena. It's a great arena. Basketball slips right through the fingertips, and there's a scrum on the hardwood for it. Utah State on the move. Here comes Ashworth and those good-looking shoes. Very strong start for a team that one of the newer net ratings is a very good team. I mean, what used to be the RPI, this is one of the, well, the better teams certainly in this conference, and standings will tell you they're right there, as that one is dropped in for yet another triple. That's your boy. That's your boy with the shoes, Ashworth. He needed something big like that to go with the shoes, his first bucket. He already had an assist. He's playing in his seventh minute. Kicks off the back of the iron and another opportunity on a defensive rebound for Utah State. Ashworth, by the way, came in 11 of 29 from long distance, close to 40%. It's just a deep team. As Kata loses the basketball. How about that effort? Yeah. Nearly got it to where he wanted to. Right. Utah State does such a good job of moving the ball. Look at these NCAA net ratings of these teams here in the Mountain West Conference. Utah State there at a 68. You see the other teams, Boise State, 18. How about that? Boise State has really come a long way. I mean, they've always been good. And Leon Rice's squad, it's the deepest, most athletic squad he's had ever. Trying to make a run at the Mountain West Championship. Derek Alston Jr. is special. I love Marcus Shaver on that team. Yes. Yes. He, he's kind of a six, seventh guy. He's, he's just, a, you know, if, if you're going to play 40, you play him for about 25, and you're getting everything from him for those 25. They are deep. In San Diego State, Matt Mitchell is having a terrific senior year. Jordan Shackle, he knocked down eight, nine three-pointers the other night. I think it was eight threes. It was outstanding from behind the arc for San Diego State. Hey, by the way, A.J. Walker and his squad with Air Force are reminding us right now and we're hanging with Boise State. They're down just seven with about uh -huh. four and a half to play. So Walker's got 20 in that game. He's playing very well. Of course, AJ's outstanding. This is a great guard. Chris Joyce, another great guard on that team. He's got 17. The two of them have 37 to hang around in that game, down seven. About four and a half to go, Boise State. You have to have great guard play to be a great basketball team. It's paramount. See, that's that pass from Caden. When we talk about why is he a good passer, he can pass all the way across from one end of the floor to the other. 
being a bit of a baseball guy, I, I see that man and think if you put him on the mound, 95 is coming right away. <laughs> That's why those passes are firm. You want to talk about leverage. Now Keda goes to work looking to break the all-time record at Utah State and blocks. This time he just grabs another rebound. How many a game per Keda? That's what he does very regularly, and that's grab those boards. He averages nine per game, but he's been a double-double machine his entire career. So look, he's keeping the basketball alive. He missed that shot, but he got two tips on it, and his team gets an offensive rebound as a result. He controls the game on both ends of the floor. Miller with the miss, rebound. And Newell sends it back the other day. Well, part of that, too, is effort, though, right? I mean, yes. he, he's long and he's athletic, but part of that's effort. That's not just your skills. That's that's heart that keeps that one alive. Penetration and a positive moment for New Mexico. Which is why I think Kata has a legitimate NBA shot. I mean, he has the body for it. He obviously puts in great effort. We just saw him knock down like an 18, 19-foot shot a little bit ago. He rebounds it. He's about to break the shot block record here at Utah State. And he can score. And he's one of the best passing big men in the entire nation. Firm tries to grab hold of that one again. His fingertips keep it alive. Miller, long distance. Bang! He is known for knocking down volume threes. Hit seven threes in a game versus Denver a year ago. And, and he gets so high up on his shot, it's very difficult to contest when he gets the ball in the air. He had six points and two steals. There it is, the shot block and the school record. Congratulations to Mr. Keda. He'll keep adding to that tally. But he was chasing Gilbert Pete, who was running in that circle at 155 career blocks. Gilbert in the late 80s. And now that record belongs to a man who will stack onto that record pretty frequently. That's a great smile right there. Well, that's one thing about Nimi Keita. You see him in a practice, or if we didn't have headphones and we would be able to sit this close and listen to him, that man has fun. He's always laughing. He's always talking to his teammates. He's upbeat. He is a fun player to be around and certainly a player you want on your team. So just for discussion, folks, it's a, a big deficit right now. Let's throw a few numbers at you as he stands in the line. And not to get lost in the numbers, but coming in, he leads a team in assists 37. Leads a team in blocks 31. Right there at the team lead in steals. Best in block percentage. Leads a team in win shares and advanced metrics and defensive win shares. And against New Mexico, obviously... That's his sweet spot. You can see in his career, shooting nearly 70%. <laughs> That's what's impressive. 68% from the field? Oh, my goodness. Mika and Dianuba are his parents. He was the Mountain West Freshman of the Year. One more little number that I find very interesting. With all the length, all the physical play, all the shot blocking. Oh, that one is another turnover. And you tell me what this means. He only averages, and here's what we're going to do. We're going to hold that number because we know that you'll come back and join us. I've got a huge number when I come back. That man, a big part of all halves for Utah State. Richie and Darren, glad to have you back with us at the temporary home of New Mexico. Here's my number, okay? Let's hear it. All the shot blocking, all the presence. He's athletic, he's fearless in the paint defensively. Only 2.2 fouls per game. That to me is crazy. Crazy. You did some great research. Don't you find that unique? No. You would think he'd be fouling out a lot with the, his prowess. With the way he's going for block shots and that kind of thing. And being a big man where you tend to get in foul trouble oftentimes because you're guarding a big strong guy or you're playing help side against a smaller player coming at you. That's quite the statistic. 2.2. Now that's this year, obviously. It's, it's, it's been a short year to this point, but kind of crazy. You would think as with his efforts, as the penetration is there, that bench is strong too for Alfonso Anderson. That's a big talking point. Utah State's bench is just night and day the last handful of games. Yeah, and Alfonso Anderson's a guy that can go this back to the basket, as you saw. He can also take outside threes. And not, that, not, not in a high percentage, but respectable. Oh, there's the guy for New Mexico that has to get going. 
McQuatch Malawatch is so consistent, can knock down outside shot, can drive to the basket as you just saw, plays well on defensive end. Gotta find a way to get some more points and stuff oh, these buckets. Baby, he was standing right by us. <laughs> Anderson with the triple. Alfonso's the senior, the pride of Tacoma, Washington, where he won a state championship at the famed Garfield High's junior year. Malawatch, a beautiful penetration pass, got sloppy. Huge. And an answer. Boy, that's a cleanup if I've ever seen one. Max Shulga. Or I should say, my apologies, Jeremiah Francis. And Francis has really struggled from the threes. Four of 24 now on the season, but the last three games, I believe, he's knocked one down. So you take away all the previous games, the last three games, he's really starting to shoot the basketball well. Had some moments when he played for the Tar Heels in North Carolina transfer. That's a moment. Marco Anthony with a flush. Just great ball movement. Dominating thus far for Utah State. Incomparable design makes it beautiful. State-of-the-art technology makes it brilliant. The visionary Lexus NX. Lease the 2021 NX 300 for $359 a month for 36 months. Experience amazing at your Lexus dealer. Ball in. On a budget? Try the new $1 Your Way menu at Burger King, featuring a flame-grilled bacon cheeseburger. Value this good is hard to find anywhere else. The new $1 Your Way menu, now at Burger King. Your way, way better. Quick step aside, right back to the action, and you would think a team like Utah State, with what they're doing, they don't want to stop at all. And they're playing deep, right? They're getting bench contribution, and that's key. I mean, you're, you're, you're able to rest your bench. They got 12 to 9 bench lead. And defense is there again. And they just, I mean, New Mexico is having a hard time scoring against the length of Utah State. And, and then defensively, they're making some errors. They're making some mistakes that are leading to layups and dunks for Utah State. Nice job clearing some space, and then again, stepping inside the three-point line. Stephen Ashworth, the freshman, with an opportunity to go to work. Won a state title his senior year. 6A state title. He did it all. He filled up the stat sheets. And this is a player you love. If you're Craig Smith, you love keeping this player at home in your home state. Oh, absolutely. And he talks about how he has a business-like approach. He's got great instincts, really understands the game. He's a terrific player as a freshman. Two-year LDS mission, so that makes him a couple of years older. There's a maturity there that you wouldn't usually see in a freshman. Was in Indianapolis in the Midwest for a couple of years, giving up his time. See how Utah State pushes the basketball, and then they get right to passing the ball. This is terrific. <laughs> I'm going to tell you what's terrific about that to me was the pass from Ashworth to Miller, the anticipation, the communication. Miller wasn't even at the spot, yeah. but he knew he knew his teammate would be there. That's what I'm saying. They wow. gel together so well. They know exactly where they're going to be on the floor. They, they have a collection of random movements and screens. They run entries and sets, and they get right into motion where they have some freedom, but they have such great IQ players, they can do that. What Craig Smith has done here is nothing short of extraordinary. 31-9 and nine in Mountain West play in his third season overall. A rare miss for a team that's shooting 60% on the game. Steps right in front, and it's a traveling violation instead. No offensive foul. Ashworth stepped right in front of that train that was Jeremiah Francis. Just the every sophomore. time they try to push the basketball. Look how fast Utah State is getting back in transition. Ashworth is already there waiting. Feels like his feet are set. Either way, it's a turnover for New Mexico. Traveling violation going the other direction. And another flush. Beautiful reward to the passing of the basketball. Trevin Dorius, the seven-footer. And you can give Dorius four points, a couple of rebounds in seven minutes. Craig Smith says he is a freak athlete in his sophomore year. And a three to climb as close as they can. Jeremiah Francis, the third. I think that's his first multi-three-point made game this season. The transfer from North Carolina. A couple of games against Nevada had 10 total points. All of the scoring was done from the free throw line. Seven of eight from the line struggled from the field. Dorius right back out to Ashworth. 
Dorius creates again. Oh, boy. A third chance now for Utah State from the corner. Wow. A triple. They deserve all three of those. Second efforts, third efforts. You see Ashworth is always sprinting from one spot on the floor to the next. Wide open for that three-point shot because he sprinted there and they knew exactly where he'd be. A turnover. The half comes to an end. Well, you want to talk about a clinic of college basketball. Craig Smith and his squad put it on. You could see it in their eyes when they were warming and preparing for this game. They weren't distracted by playing in a secondary gym. As a matter of fact, they're treating it right now like this is their home building. Utah State. Wow. Inside the paint, New Mexico having a very difficult time scoring on the other end of the floor. Absolutely incredible. There's impact, certainly. Boise State wins again. They improved to 6-0, 10-1 overall on the season. You can see what's going on Fresno State and San Jose State. San Jose State had a big near knockoff of Boise State last weekend. But this is what it means as it pertains to the conference. And we talked about the, the net rating for Colorado State and for San Diego State, both inside of the top 50 along with Boise State. Utah State actually outside of that number right now. So you could argue that uh, even though you're not going to jump much with a win here as it pertains to the to the net ranking, this is still a conference need to win this game. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, and look, look at those standings. I, You know, we're going to see a much different look coming a month from now. I think San Diego State's going to continue winning, get back to the top of that. And I tell you, Nico Medved, Colorado State's head coach, has proven that they can beat anybody in this conference to this point. So let's enjoy the second half of basketball. Richie Schuler, Darren Sutton, and you. Glad to have you spending time with us. We trust you've been safe out there. Had some good blessings to enjoy over the weekend. And have a good weekend, everyone. A lot of sports going on this weekend. A lot of ways to escape on one of the Fox family of networks. That one turns over, heads back the other way. And this is good for New Mexico. They have to come out here in the second half with a spirited defensive effort, but then they got to reward themselves on the other end of the floor. They have to find ways to score down inside the paint. One way they can do that is to try to set ball screens with whoever Kata is guarding. If they can get some ball screens going, see Matos is being guarded by Kata, that'll at least get Kata away from the basket and maybe get some drives to finish inside. And a different look, some playing time for Nolan Dorsey, the freshman out of North Carolina. Didn't see the court much in the first half. Has the ball in his hands now. So Dorsey, an opportunity. Beautiful pass. Wide open stroke. Hey, welcome to the game, Mr. Dorsey. It's exactly what they needed. A great defensive stop followed up by a three-point shot. That should get him going a little bit. Hey, by the way, those are his first college points. So congratulations. Welcome to Division I basketball. And maybe you help your team regain a little confidence as he tries to sneak in there and swipe it away. Oh, that's a great start for New Mexico. Barron's on the move, gets in a little bit of trouble. Oh, Dorsey with confidence along the baseline and is nudged, earning a foul. It's fun. Obviously, there is no crowd. This is an empty building. That entire staff, all the players acting as the crowd. There's a lot of energy for New Mexico <laughs> right now. And Dorsey's giving it to him with this wide open three point shot that was kicked out to him. Then he gets the foul driving baseline and the ensuing possession. Paul Weir having to do whatever he can just to get his team going. Getting Dorsey in there, mixing it up a little bit. Turned over. And Merritt just backed himself into trouble. You can give credit defensively to Kata, but just a poor choice that time. Trying to create, nothing was there. Into the corner and a miss at a three-point attempt. And a slide underneath, and that's a tough whistle there. Isaiah Marin earns it, the freshman out of Buckeye Union High School, which is just outside of Phoenix, Arizona. That's a tough break. Uh, yeah, but he's fighting down inside. And as a coach, you can live with that foul. Yeah. Uh, if I'm coaching, if I'm Paul Weir, I am applauding Marin. Hey, good work. He's 6'7", you're blocking out. Much bigger than you. Look at him fight down inside. Miller can stroke it from long distance. Off the mark. Five to the air, the grabbing the rebound. Missed the beam. Well, Euro step for Miller to miss uh -huh. that time. There's an effort. There's a rebound. Marin fighting a lot. When you're in this kind of situation that Paul Weir in New Mexico is in right now, you got to try to win the small battles. You got crushed in the first half. All right, let's focus on these next 20 minutes. Let's just win one five-minute segment at a time. 
and see what happens at the end of the second half. Traveling violation, you could see that one coming as he leaned his entire weight. My question for you, and I know Utah State really delivered like four body blows right out of the gates. But the Lobos didn't have this energy and passion, especially on the sidelines in the first half. And you hate that it took what happened in the first half to get to this point. You know, Paul Weir told a story that there's been some bumps in the road with this team. And they have been on the road for about a month and a half straight. Maybe you've gone back to Albuquerque once during that time frame. Oh, boy. But it's been a challenge for them, as you see. They're, they're still struggling to rebound against these big boys. But look at this offense. Oh, anticipation, the line. And it is closed nicely by Keda. Bean to Keda. Bean with the assist. Coach Weir was telling us that they've been wearing on them the last few days because they were under the impression as a team that after this series here, they were going to be able to go back to Albuquerque, relax a couple of days, and then go to UNLV. Found out they weren't allowed to go back to Albuquerque, so they got to stay on the road without going back to their college town before they go on the road to Las Vegas. And so they're not getting any more opportunities to go relax in their own beds. Look at this play. Justin Bean throwing the lob pass to Nimi Keita. Again, like you said earlier, they seem to know all the time where their teammate is going to be on the offensive end of the floor. Yeah, it's a great watch. I mean, it is really a great watch. The selflessness, this is a deep team that goes about 10 deep easily with athleticism. Marco Anthony is at the line, the redshirt junior, the poli sci major. Marco, the son of Monica and Charles. And a young man that played 35 games before transferring. Well, you know he knows how to win. He was on that 2019 championship team. I think you may have mentioned that earlier. But this team, Utah State, is full of guys that know how to win. Every possession, not the course of a game. They're looking at every single possession. they got to win it. Boy, great pass and sneaking it right into the paint. Rod Brown, the recipient of that pass, but a, a beautiful close. I mean, a pretty, pretty close and a nice pass from Francis. Second assist for him. Well, if anything, when you're down a bunch, as Keita with a jump hook, kept alive and a tip by Bean. Everything they can do to grab the ball, and they do. And a foul that time on Keita. Kind of an inconsequential bump as he earns the whistle. We told you, he doesn't get into foul trouble at all. And so to have him earn a whistle is rare, as he does earn his first foul. That's the stunning part of it. That presence, the shot blocking for Utah State. That man, his first foul. Utah State dominating. And maybe professional basketball tonight. He's playing like a pro. But I think what's interesting, Rich, he's filling the stat sheet again. That's what he does. He has seven rebounds showing his range here, about 17 feet out. He's got three block shots, broke the all-time school record at Utah State, and you know he can finish. You look at his numbers, you say he's only got five points, but he affects the game on both ends of the floor. He absolutely controls the defensive end, and you have to worry about him on offense. Gives up great shots for his teammates, and man, oh man, one of the best passers of any big man in the entire nation. Well, that's a great effort there with power. Matos squeaks his way through. Byron. The young man out of Santo Domingo in the Dominican Republic. That was a great confident effort there. Averages seven, five rebounds a game. Had only one point in 22 minutes in game one. <laughs> and right back at you, the football star, Raleigh Wooster. Let me throw this at you. There's, there's, there's actually 113 players playing Division I basketball that are seven feet or taller. You believe that? Wow. Seems Maybe, like a high number. Right? Only eight of them have double-digit assists on the season. Only one has more than 15 assists on the season. That's Nimi Keita. They think he's the best passing big and one of the best finishers, as we see in the nation. Portuguese power there. My goodness. He works defensively, and he is a presence. Well, he just believes in himself. That's why he doesn't earn fouls. He doesn't leave his feet much. Understands how intimidating he is just by standing there. And I mean athletically, obviously. Bean steps defensively. Fading through the lane. High arcing shot. And here comes Bean with the basketball. All the way. And a nice job. 
Except for wow. Anthony's there to clean things up. Knocked out of bounds. That's a tough break. Good effort there by the Lobos. It's Utah State basketball. Here's Kata again. That's a great play right here. Good move. See, that's all about footwork. And that's something he's really improved. Look, he pivots on his left. He goes with his right and then pivots over more inside. And he's so powerful that the defense had to back up. I mean, he's a legit like, 245 at seven feet tall. He's lean. He's long. But he has gotten so much stronger. And I, and I give him a lot of credit. He didn't go home during the quarantine. He stayed here in the States, in Logan, and just improved his game, got in great shape, and he really committed to strength and conditioning. Incredible effort keeping it alive. Bean dives under the bucket. Wooster takes advantage. It's all set up, though, by the diving Raleigh Wooster smashed against the end zone. And a fun effort. That's that football player in him there. Former safety, former quarterback. What a fun coming out party for this man. Nolan Dorsey hit his first college three. He's wearing number 21 top of your screen now. He may get the basketball again here in a moment. Shot clock at eight. He does have it. He's up with it at the free throw line. And almost got a kind roll. But another rebound grabbed by the big fella. No whistle. Good no call there. Hands up, defensive stop, and a good defensive stop by Malawatch. Here's this hustle we're talking about. Well, Watch this. Look at this. Justin Bean, 6'7", six, 6'8", six, strong, dives on the floor, gives his team another opportunity, and then a great pass by Ashworth down inside to Wooster. Hey, that's freshman to freshman looking out for one another. So we talk about all the great veterans on this Utah State team, but they have their own mix. Seven true freshmen, young players on this Aggie squad. They started 5-0 in the WAC in 2012-2013. This is their first ever 5-0 start since they've joined the Mountain West Conference. It's actually quite impressive that this is their eighth day on the road in 10 games. And here they are in Lubbock, Texas, up by 30 points or close to. This is probably where they're most at home. Bean takes advantage again. The great penetration in the pass. Justin Bean slams that one home. He's got 11 points. He's got nine rebounds. A couple of bounces away from a double-double for Bean. Bean averaging 12 points and eight rebounds a game. Nearly grabbing a 50-50 ball, chasing it down. Bearstone. High up over the swinging arms and the swatting attempts. And a bucket that time, Jeremiah Francis III, the son of Felicia and Jerome, both of whom were Division I athletes at Ohio State. But right back at you, Raleigh Wooster out of Hellgate High School in Montana. <laughs> Unbelievable. Like at the free throw line when he came to help and pin it on the backboard. Ashworth, it's right there. Right back the other way we come. 11.30 to go in this one. 58-27, Utah State on top. Boy, does he intimidate. He really intimidates. Rod Brown did a nice job. He went up with it quickly, but tentatively. Brown with the bucket. 58-29. Utah State, kind of night. They've got some challenges coming up for the next couple of weeks. So far, not one tonight one on Sunday. It's Duke and Providence going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Scruggs and Xavier. That's Sunday at 11 a.m. Eastern on Fox and the Fox Sports app. Out west, get that coffee brewing. What a great way to start your Sunday. Big East basketball on Fox Sports 1. Got to go with my hometown team, Xavier. Okay. From Cincinnati. Overall standings, you can see. And by the way, that game's on Fox. I wanted to make sure I got that one right. Didn't want to send it to the wrong place. So interestingly enough, Justin Bean, who has had one heck of a game, right? I mean, this has been, we're talking about the stars. And we're talking about who's done what, but Bean has been great. He's got 11 points. He's got 10 rebounds. And you know, that's his 21st career double-double. He's the active leader in all the Mountain West Conference. Those 11 points are impressive, but what's most impressive is he's only five of seven from the field. That's incredibly efficient. He's getting a lot of shots around the basket, even knocked down an outside shot or two. Steps called, being watching from the bench right now. 
We will step aside. Quick break. Lobos back to the bench trying to pull things back together. Utah State. Coach, you guys are in great shape. Challenged themselves early in the season. VCU, BYU, South Dakota State. And now they're ready for matchups in conference, and they're ready with presence in the paint. They do a great job at 46 points in the paint two nights ago against the Lobos. 28 so far in this one, but you see, they get a lot of players in the paint. They make that interior pass, and oftentimes it finishes with a highlight dunk. This one was my favorite right here. Bean Takeda, two dominant big men for the Aggies. Look at Bean hiding back there. You can't hide those numbers. The advanced metric win shares, offensive win shares. He's number one in this conference. Number one in the conference. He may be hiding on the bench right now, but he has the same numbers as Grant Sherfield of Nevada. And Derek Alston, Kata, they trail. Got some discomfort going on back there, but this is the, according to the advanced metrics, the most dangerous offensive player in the conference. Well, he's efficient. We know that. And that plays into the advanced metrics, obviously, yeah. right? For sure it does. I mean, I was a big fan of Justin Bean last year. I mean, he really had his coming out party. I don't think they expected him to be as effective as he was just a year ago. He was terrific. 12 points, 10 and a half boards a game, 52% from the field. He's carried that over to his junior year. The son of Shauna and Gordon. Mom played hoops at Idaho State. Talking about Mr. Bean. 58-31. Well, how many nicknames could you come up with for Mr. Bean? Oh, no, it's the best. I mean, that's obviously, that being the name, it's such a fun name, Justin Bean. <laughs> On its own, it's just fun to say. Isn't there a character, Mr. Bean? There is. Richie, you're not going to take it. I am. They're feeding us at the truck. Roland Atkinson is the British actor. I mean, it was right there for you on the tee. I, I couldn't make out the first name. I don't know the actor. Ah, <laughs> uh, Mr. Bean. I think Mr. Bean, if I recall correctly, very intelligent. I, I didn't take it in a lot as far as content goes. I remember some eyebrows being part of the look. Just a memory. I wonder if Justin's father looks like Mr. Bean. Swatted away by Dorius. Shot clock violation as well. At the 9.59 mark. <laughs> Look at this block shot. Dorius. I mean, he's 7 foot, 240 pounds. Great leaping ability with that footwork down inside. Bairstow's on the move. And he earns himself a chance to go to the line. Second half, by the way, is 42% from the floor for New Mexico. So they're not blowing the doors off, but it's 42 to 32 as it pertains to field goal percentage in the second half of this game, specifically. Well, crazy things have happened. Colorado State was down 26 points to San Diego State. Now, that was in the first half, not in the last 10 minutes. But one thing I know about Paul Weir coach teams. Now, this is probably his least talented group in the four years at the helm as head coach. But his teams always fight. They never quit. And he's such an intellectual guy, you know, PhD, Coach Weir has an actual doctorate degree. You know, he, he coaches, he teaches, but his players put in effort. And I, I really think they're overmatched, you know, and, and they got off to an incredibly late start, three, four months behind the scenes like everybody else. They're still trying to figure each other out, and they go right into the gauntlet, playing some of the best teams in the conference off the bat. Wow, an incredible athletic play by Keith McGee, the Rochester, New York native. Unbelievable. That had everything you'd want in an acrobatic shot, including some really pretty touch. Offensive foul. Check this out. There it is, McGee. He's not just a three-point shooter. He's a finisher, a little dipsy do with his left hand right underneath the long outstretched arm of Mr. Anderson. Keith McGee had 10 points in 20 minutes in the first game, the first matchup. He had a game 
where he had 25 five assists last year against San Jose State really blew their doors off. Had an incredible game. Keith McGee, South Plains College, the transfer. Keith, you impressed us. You got to go to work, though. He did. Beautiful pass. Offensive foul. Stephen Ashworth stepped right in. That's terrific. You have to have your feet outside the restricted arc. It's a terrific pass by McGee. Ashworth is there. Well done. Well done. I, it's unfortunate, too, because I thought it was a great pass by McGee. Rod Brown went up to finish strong. That's what he does. But the defense in just such great positioning. You're seeing Utah State offensively and defensively. It seems like they're always in the right place at the right time. Brown's got a couple of fouls. Four fouls for Marin. There is no foul trouble to speak of for Utah State. Ouch! My goodness, again. Keda closes. It's all about, for Utah State, they seem to beat their defenders off the bounce. A lot of times it's because the ball's passing around, they're getting good ball movement, loosens up the defense. But once you beat a defender off the bounce, I mean, you've you got to have an insurance policy on defense to have a chance to stop them. Freshman with the steal. The freshman dumps that one off. Well off the mark, but he follows and hangs around. That's a couple of more college points for Nolan Dorsey, getting some court time for the first time. Coach Paul Weir may have found himself another player for the rotation. Still trying to figure that out. They've had a five different starting lineups just since the season began. Along the baseline, look who's back in, lighting things up, Justin Bean. At 15 at Air Force in both games. A little step back, fade away, pretty jumper, McWatch, Malawatch. There Malawatch is. has 10 points, Malawatch on the move again. Unfortunate miss that time, he did a lot to earn the opportunity. That three-pointer rings in and out. Ashworth, he may get another chance at it. Steps off to his right. Little floater, what a pretty touch. Off the bounce, mid-range. 65-37, Ashworth with 10. He had 10 and 15 minutes in the win earlier this year against San Jose State. Well, every perimeter player should be able to take a mid-range shot off the bounce in college. He's only a freshman. He makes it look easy. Anthony, it was too easy as he slipped right on by. Quatch. 6.30 to go in this one. Bean has it swatted away. That's a great effort there. Out front, beautiful full court pass. Does it turn into anything? Kind of found myself pulling for that one to go in. I'll be honest <laughs> with you. Yeah. I'll be honest. I know we're supposed to walk right down the middle. And a reach and a foul that time to allow both these teams to, to empty the bench. It's a great story. Dorsey getting his first college points. You want him to knock down another one, but Utah State way too good. This pass, Bean Takeda, they have something special down inside here in Aggieland. Game, how we doing? Well, you know, obviously Utah State is, they're winning in every single category. As far as controlling the paint, the Lobos done a much better job than they did in game one just two nights ago, but still they're losing in that battle. Rebounding, we're seeing Utah State absolutely demolishing New Mexico there. They're huge. They go after rebounds, and they do a terrific job getting offensive boards. They have 15 tonight in shooting percentages. New Mexico having a hard time scoring over the length of Utah State. And you know what? It's amazing. Utah State is getting so many baskets around the basket. Their field goal percentage is terrific, near 50%. And still, you're coaching. And you have six minutes to play with. And that's all you have left are the final six minutes if you're Paul Weir. That was a great shot of him with the freshman over his shoulder. Nolan Dorsey earning some playing time. What do you do with these last six minutes? You got a chance maybe to earn some playing time if you're a player coming off the bench for New Mexico. Coach, we are searching. He is searching for who he can roll with for the rest of the season. Most teams have the ability to do this early in the year. They're playing catch-up. 
Uh, you know, I give them a lot of credit because, you know, they started out hot. They were 3-0. They broke an all-time school rebounding record, 79 boards against Letourneau early on. And now they've lost five straight. It looks like it's going to be six. But he keeps a positive attitude. He keeps them up despite all the circumstances they're dealing with. And you just have to try to win the small battles. Win four-minute game battles, five-minute game battles. Try to win in certain statistical areas. One extra pass, and that's all it took. Great effort to hold on to the basketball. And then in the end, Justin Bean is the man who earns that opportunity. And there's more head scratching going on, literal head scratching. 30-point lead. Bean's got 13 with 12 rebounds. Kata's got 9 points and 12 rebounds as well. Anthony's got 12 and 8. And that 3 is run home by the Quatch, Malawatch. And Malawatch has never been relied on in his four years till this season to be the primary scorer. And now he's the leading scorer. They need one or two more McQuatch Malawatches on the squad. He's usually maybe the second or third leading scorer on the team. One more pass. I feel like we say that a lot with this Utah State team. Right back up with it. That's a double-double. Yet another. He's got 11 points. He's got 12 rebounds. He does that so very well. 18 career double-doubles. Be an NBA scout for me. You mind doing that, Richie? Well, I guess we're talking about Kate, aren't you? Yep. Be an NBA scout and just with your words, write a bit of a report for me. Well, I understand that he is a terrific rebounder, right? NBA scouts tell me that's the one area that usually translates, continues on from one level up to the next. So, boom, he's going to be a good rebounder if he were to go to the NBA. Can he shoot it well enough? That is one question. Is he strong enough? That is another question. But... The fact that he can pass out of those double and triple teams, hit his teammates for shots, one of the best in the nation at doing that, and he has developed a little bit of a mid-range shot, and he's a terrific shot blocker. I think he's got some things going for him. Does he get drafted? I don't know. But is he a player that a lot of NBA teams would want on, his on their team? Absolutely. Well, there's got to be a lot of eyeballs on a player like this who seems to have a lot more left as far as development, growing, learning. They don't build the offense around him. You have the feeling if they right. did, this is a very disciplined offense. This is an offense that is absolutely, as I've said a lot, one extra pass is their offense, very disciplined. And they don't. And you feel like if they built the offense around him at this mid-major level, he could easily go for 20 and 15 average. I, I mean, so. you feel like 30 points would be nothing for him and that's fine that they don't build the offense around him. Well, you know, a year and a half ago, he sprained his knee in the FIBA U-20 Euro Championships. He never started playing in uniform until December or January a year ago. He was never in great shape all last season. Now he's more explosive than he's ever been. He gets off the floor much quicker. He's more physically mature, more mobile going east and west, getting off the floor so much faster. I mean, he looks terrific. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Just waited, if only a moment. He got Javante Johnson into the popcorn machine and then crushed it. Every time I speak, as soon as I'm finishing a point, Utah State gets some sort of great play. Yeah, I, I think it's hard to hold to any sort of extended conversation the way they've played tonight. That's good hustle right there. That's not giving up defensively for New Mexico. That's what I'm saying. New Mexico does not give up. Look at this. Trevin Dorius just manhandling, bowling his teammates. And look at the crowd. It's the Utah State bench creating their own energy for this team. This is a Utah State team that has been to the NCAA tournament 21 times. They're on the journey. They hope to go back there. Here's what's next for them. Well, they've been on the road for the better part of the last 10 days. But look, four straight home games. San Diego State twice, Colorado State twice. Thing is, they got to play those four straight home games within an eight-day span. Now, San Diego State has been the best defensive and rebounding team in the league. You know, right behind them, Utah State. So you have two of the most dynamic programs over the last couple of years in the Mountain West going head-to-head. -head. And then Colorado State, like we said earlier, they've proven they can beat anybody going on the road and beating the Aztecs just a week ago. San Diego State builds their offense through defense. They play crushing defense. And it'll be interesting to see how these two go toe-to-toe, -to -toe. seeing what they did in person to Arizona State earlier this year well, as Anderson's at the line. You're finally going to start seeing some real separation potentially occur 
after those two series for Utah State. I mean, if they come out 3-1, and 4-0, I mean, you know, they're going to be looked at as maybe being the favorite the rest of the way, possibly. Of course, you got Boise State in there still. San Diego State's got a lot to say about that, as does Colorado State. I'm just saying, there's going to be some separation. Now, remember, San Diego State already has one conference loss. So, you know, is it, I think it's Boise State and Utah State there at the head of the class right now uh, with Colorado State and, and San Diego State right behind. A little high step, having fun out there. Nolan, this game is fun, and you've earned some extra playing time. 21, he's got the basketball in his hands now. Well, oh, it looks comfortable. Wow. How about you? Guess who's going to be playing a little bit more? <laughs> I love it. Came in without a single college point. His name is Nolan Dorsey. His mom is Michelle. He's from Nightdale, North Carolina. Everyone, all you Millbrook High Schoolers are watching your former teammate. Logan Padgett picks the pocket, comes back the other way. Quick pass, Padgett swings it on around into the corner. Still coaching their team. Look, assistant coach Scott Padgett up up. Coaching staff. Cheering, coaching, never Good missing pass. an opportunity to make their team better. Good pass. Really nice pass, dumping it in there to Valder Manuel, who comes up empty. And this Lobo squad, and they really feel that they're starting completely over, and this is a group that both of them are going to be with them throughout. And this is, this is going to be the foundation of the program from here on out for Paul Weir. The pride of Angola, Valdir Manuel, an All-American, junior college All-American in Pennsylvania at Harkham before transferring over. Too many steps, feet got busy. Max Shulga has earned some playing time. Shulga out of the Ukraine, the son of Olga and Boris. Gets a chance to get out there and get busy, play the last couple of minutes. Good opportunity for him. Just a freshman, a bright future ahead. Another one who had to make that tough decision to stay stateside during the holidays. It was cleaned up. That wasn't an alley -oop, but that was cleaned up by Manuel. He'll take those two points. Take them however you can get them at this point in the game. If you're either team right now, your goal is to get out of this game with no injuries. There's Stowe. Wheels and deals in the paint. Pretty bucket. And he is so lanky and thin, but he's pretty quick. Does a really good job with that basketball. Churchy High School, Brisbane, Australia. Shulga charges hard. He collides with Johnson. It's Johnson that'll learn the whistle. So Utah State, you can put this one in the win column for sure. And so what does it mean for the standings? Right there with Boise State at a perfect 6-0 earlier today. Boise State 80, Air Force 69. Shaver had 14 in that one. Kijab had 25, Alston 19 for Boise State. They're loaded. Uh, Boise State has so much depth. They're long, got a ton of length, a ton of athleticism. I'll say it again, it's the best Boise State team that Leon Rice has had. It's going to give some of these top dogs problems. You know, Craig Smith here, Utah State. I think it's going to give San Diego State issues when they go head to head. Fresno State beat San Jose State by 15. 79-64, Orlando Robinson at 23 points, 14 rebounds in that one. Hands in the right place, battered away by Utah State. With these teams playing to the finish line, some fresh legs out there getting an opportunity, and Bearstow forces his will upon the bucket. I just like this. I mean, you're, you're down over 30 points, yet New Mexico is still going at it, getting guys some opportunity to play a little bit more. But they, I, mean, I just love how the coaching staff is continuing to coach them up, not wasting any time to try to make this team as best as they possibly can be. That one rings in and out as we approach 30 seconds. One of the discoveries for New Mexico, Nolan Dorsey, for sure. A ton of confidence. Long distance in that one rolls. Really home the bench celebrates like crazy <laughs> oh my goodness Carson Stastny the Texan back home the guard with the bucket that a boy Carson that went off the mark as we put this one in the books 
They celebrate for one of their teammates who finally gets a chance to put a notch in that score sheet. And it's another notch in the win column for Utah State. This is a team destined to be playing meaningful games in March. Look, I tell you, a lot of teams didn't expect Utah State to be as great this year, losing Sam Merrill to the NBA from a year ago. But back-to-back -back conference tournament champions for Utah State, and I tell you, they look poised to make their way back to the Mountain West Tournament Championship game and possibly another NCAA tournament berth. Wonderful hospitality for the good folks at Lubbock Christian. Thank you for hosting us, as well as New Mexico and Utah State. On behalf of our Fox Sports 1 production team, Bruce Wolf, producer, Buzz Carrick, director, he's Richie Schuler. My name is Darren Sutton. Stay safe out there. Enjoy.